He is in his 13th year in the National Football League, but his first with a new team outside of the city of Detroit. He is the Los Angeles Rams quarterback, Matthew Stafford, here on the Rich Eisen Show. How are you, Matthew Stafford? I am doing good, Rich. How are you? I am doing well. So uh, it took me when I moved uh, to Los Angeles back in 2003. Uh, it took me a while to realize that whenever I was working indoors, this was at NFL Network, I was working indoors, and it took me at least two, three, four weeks to stop lamenting, man, I'm indoors when it's so beautiful outside because it's usually very beautiful outside. Have you gone through that process so far, Matthew Well, luckily Stafford? for me, my job is outside. Ah, that's true. Um, so I get, to, uh, I get to enjoy it, but I am, uh, I am enjoying it for sure. That's, uh, I pinch myself waking up and seeing the sun up every day. And <laughs> about 70, 75 degrees. It's pretty nice. It, it sure is. So, uh, so far... What have you been? Uh, what have you been doing so far to get yourself acclimated football-wise? Walk me through that process for you, Matthew. Yeah, you know, I think uh, I've just been trying to catch up as much as I can. Um, you know, I'm in a little bit of a unique position in the fact that everybody here has pretty much been running some version of this offense for the last four or five years. So, um, you know, they're definitely ahead of the game when it comes to the mental aspect. When you know, as far as where I'm at, so I'm just trying to catch up, do everything I can there. And then last week we kind of started. Uh, doing some on-field stuff um, in a little bit of a limited capacity, but it was good to get out there and meet the guys and kind of start working with them, throwing with them, and, and doing all that kind of stuff. So it's it's picking back up, but, uh, yeah, it's definitely a, a process for me and something that uh, is a big challenge on the mental aspect, but I will, uh, you know, do my part to make sure I'm ready to go. And what about McVeigh? He talks very fast, uh, Matthew. Uh, I, <laughs> he does. He He's talks, a smart guy. He's got a lot to say. I know that. He, um, so he, do you, I guess you have he, to pick uh, up his cadence as well too i imagine yeah definitely there's there's communication um you know obviously he's he's given me the plays through the headset we're talking constantly out at practice um and you know and in the meetings and all that kind of stuff just trying to uh you know get to know each other as best we can because that's a you know that's an important relationship for for not only uh the offense but our team and so how many plays has he given you or is he going to give you multiple ones he's going to give you one and then it's your job at the line to figure out what what happens there i mean what is the uh the protocol that you're expecting for, oh, for it's this. it's a little bit of everything, you know. Sometimes we got one, we got two, we got open ended. Um, you know, just about like everybody else in the NFL, there's uh there's a, a bunch of different options, but uh, you know, it's it's definitely a complex offense, one that uh, you know, uh, has been, you know, executing and and uh, been atop the NFL for a long time around here. So uh, just got a lot of uh, you know, a lot of work to do to make sure we keep it there and, and get better. Let's get to the, the road to Los Angeles, Matthew Stafford. Um, at what point did you decide or figure out, you, your wife, your family, your team, that um, you were going to make an attempt here to uh, start a new chapter football-wise? Can you walk me through that process, please, Matthew? Yeah, I mean, that was a, a tough one. Um, you know, it was something that uh... – you know, I definitely spent a lot of time talking and thinking about with, uh, you know, people I'm close to, mostly just my wife, um, you know, and a little bit of family. But, uh, you know, it was something that kind of came to fruition after the season. I went in and talked to, uh, you know, the uh, the leadership over there in, in Detroit, and, and they were amazing, um, you know, to me. They were really receptive and understanding at the same time. Um, you know, we wanted to do what was best for both both parties, and, and I feel like we got that done. Um, you know, it was uh, – is about as smooth a process as it can go when it comes to trading away somebody who's been, you know, in your in your organization for 12 years. Um, so I was uh, I was really appreciative of the way they handled it, and uh, you know I hope they were, um, you know, fond of the way I handled it as well. So it uh, it worked out. Um, you know I got nothing but great memories there, and and a bunch of great friends and people I care a lot about. So uh, it was tough to leave, but at the same time I'm excited for, you know, a new chapter for me, my family, and and. Um, you know, out here in L.A. is going to be a lot of fun. No question these things could go sideways. I mean, you know that. I mean, being in the league for over a decade, when you go into a front office or reach out to somebody, who, who did you reach out to? Did you go to the owner? Did you go to um, whoever was the general manager at the time? Because, uh, you know, there was such a transition period. I mean, who did you speak to with such a sensitive request that if it gets out, it could send things in a totally different direction than the one that it, it wound up in with you in Los Angeles, Matthew? Yeah, I mean it was it was delicate, no question. Um, you know, and and uh, so I talked to to Rod Wood, who's our team president, and um, Sheila, uh, Mrs. Ford Hamp. So that was uh, 
that, those were the two people that I talked to, um, you know, and, and they were obviously, uh, you know, been been around me for a while and, and understand where I was coming from. And, um, you know, I think disappointed, but also understanding and, re- and you know, responsive. So that was uh, that was a good thing. And, and um, again, I just can't say enough about the way they handled it, um, you know, and, and I hope they feel the same way, you know, with the way I did. Um, but just, just happy that, uh, you know, it, you're seeing it today. You know, there's there's all sorts of, you know, things going on where, uh, you know, basically the player and the and the team or the front franchise, you know, aren't uh, aren't seeing eye to eye. And I was just happy that you know it worked out as smoothly as it did for me. Matthew Stafford here on the Rich Eisen show. As for the why to go uh, and decide after 12 years, you know, I'm going to take things a little bit in my own hands, even without, you know, having a free agency year that's right around the corner. Uh, to try and make a change. You spoke to the uh, the great Sam Farmer here in Los Angeles for the LA Times. I love that guy. And you spoke with him. And I just want to take an exchange from your, your Q&A that was printed in the Los Angeles Times last week. He mentioned two quarterbacks, Rich Gannon and Carson Palmer, who were able to redefine themselves in their last stops of their career. He asked you, do you think about that? Your answer was, there's no question, absolutely. Different scenario. But even Tom Brady last year, going to a new team and a different coach and a new way of doing things and having success. Did Brady in Tampa make you, in a way, sit down and go, okay, if he can do that after 20 years and after winning all those championships there, maybe I can try it. Was he kind of, in a way, uh, lack of a better phrase, inspiration for you to try it? Um, I don't know. You know, I think uh, I kind of take in the landscape of the league every year. Um, Obviously, it was an incredible thing that he was able to do last year, Um, you know, after – basically knowing one way for a long, long time and having a ton of success and then just kind of picking up and moving on and, and taking that success with him, um, which I thought was really impressive. Um, some of those other guys that were mentioned in that article, obviously, um, you know, were, were part of it. But at the same time, uh, just because one or all three of those guys did what they did didn't mean I was going to do what I was going to do. It was, it was something that really came from, uh, you know, my family and, and uh, my situation because everybody's situation is different. Um, but it is nice to know that um, you know, it, it can happen and guys have done it. Um, it's a lot of hard work and, you know, a lot of, a lot of changes and a lot of new faces and all that kind of stuff. But, uh, you can, you can definitely make it work. Matthew Stafford here on the Rich Eisen show. And again, I, I, to, to say that, you know, you know, we can say it in the business that this is your most talented team that you, you've, you've maybe been around. And that, that's a lot to say, certainly since there's a first ballot hall of famer that's going in and Megatron and you did have some talented players, but I'm wondering what your thoughts were when you were in this huddle and seeing all these guys Cop and Woods and Cam Akers and Whitworth as well, the gray beard that's going to have your back. I mean, what, what was it like being in that huddle looking around at your new teammates, Matthew? Um, it was great. You know, obviously uh, I've got a lot of respect for what a lot of these guys have been able to do for a long time in this league and, and some of the, you know, immediate success guys have had some young players that are playing at a really high level. So uh, more than anything, you know, I felt a, a sense of responsibility to make sure that I'm doing my part to make sure these guys get to achieve everything they want to achieve and and, uh, you know, at the end of the day, the quarterback's, you know, the facilitator. Um, i got to get these guys the ball, and, and uh, whether it's handing it to Cam or, or uh, you know, throwing it to Cooper, whatever it is, um, it's my job to make sure that I'm getting them the ball so they can do their thing. And, and uh, so I just felt a, a bunch of responsibility to make sure that as a new guy coming in that I was up to speed and, and uh, doing everything I can to try and, uh, you know, immerse myself in this offense and, and learn it and, and be there as, uh, as quickly as possible. You, you are, are you aware of the number of uh, times that you've had a 100-yard um, a rusher? Either to your left or right uh, or behind I you think in a single I, game. What is it? Ten or twelve? It's eleven. Like right 11. in the middle. Let's split the difference. It's eleven. Yeah, eleven. Yep. It's eleven, Matthew. I mean, um, so what do you think of the running core here and what it will add to what you can do? Because the general sense of things is you are about to be on a launching pad position in your career in year thirteen. I wonder what you think right now. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously there's really talented players in the backfield. Um, you know, in this offense, we do a great job of mixing up looks and, and, uh, you know, using motion to our advantage. Um, you know, I think we, we hand it to the receivers, we hand it to the running backs, uh, you know, um, so it's, it's going to be, uh, you know, an exciting thing for me. It's a, it's a lot to learn, a lot to process to make sure I'm getting us in the best plays and the best runs. Um, and then it's going to be fun to watch these guys up front, um, do their thing and, and the guys, uh, carrying the ball you know, go make guys in the secondary miss and then break off big runs. So I'm excited to be a part of it. Um, you know, the whole culture, the whole uh, team, everybody that I've uh, met here has been fantastic. So I'm just, 
you know, just excited about, uh, you know, trying to take take advantage of this opportunity. Okay, in the few minutes I have left with you, Matthew Stafford, what is the most Los Angeles thing you've done to date since being oh, a Los Angeles uh, resident? What is literally the one thing I, like, I can't know. believe I'm doing? Have yoga? Hot yoga? Um, <laughs> um, what do you got? Uh, Avocado toast? Question. What do you got? Um, what have you done? I mean, I ate, I ate at Nobu in Malibu. I feel like that's a pretty trendy yeah, LA thing. Well done. That deserves a round of applause from the Rich Eisen yeah. Show crew. Um, <laughs> uh, what you actually, you know, one of the first. This is this is a Los Angeles thing, you know, for for some, you know, knock on wood, um, that uh, running into somebody in Cabo is a very Los Angeles thing, and <laughs> it looks like that was the first Los Angeles thing you did, right, with Sean McVay? Yeah, we can. We can check that off the list. Yep, I did that. Um, yeah, I ran into it was a it was, crazy, crazy thing. Ran into those guys down there, him and Witt, and and uh, there were actually a bunch of other NFL guys down there. But uh, yeah, ran into those guys, and and um, you know that was kind of what jump started. I think the whole thing. So it was uh, crazy seeing them down there and all that. But uh, just glad that uh, you know worked out the way it did. So it was totally random that as you were being potentially acquired by the Los Angeles Rams that there was McVeigh, there was Whitworth. We, that there was, because again, this is not free agency. It's not like the, da- the, the Clippers running uh, off to Dallas to keep DeAndre Jordan or something like that locked in their house, like from a couple of years ago. But maybe this was, their, yeah. maybe this was planned. I don't know. What do you think? No, it was, it was, it was honestly totally random. Um, of wow. all the places to stay in Cabo, to be in the same place, uh, I was going down there with just my wife. Uh, we didn't really know where we were staying. Um, got a call on where we were going and, and, uh, you know, ended up being a very similar or the same place that, uh, uh, you know, Witt and, and coach were at. So it was, it was kind of a crazy, a crazy deal. Um, you know, and then it, uh, you know, kind of just snowballed from there and, and, um, happened the way it did. Well, the other Los Angeles thing is to, to be on television, to have another human being offer you something for your parking spot. That's another Los Angeles thing that happened on NFL <laughs> network just a couple of weeks ago. It did some. Some lunatic, <laughs> some crazy guy was asking me for it, but yep. Uh, yep. no, you uh, we can work something out. Cause we'll it, figure it out again. You know, like I I I already went to Brandon Staley of the Chargers and asked him for his spot <laughs> on Rams home days. So if I get the Chargers coach and the Rams quarterback, I think I'm walking like two feet to work. Basically, do you know where your spot Sounds is already? Like you're going to be in a good spot. Do you do you know where your spot is already at, at SoFi Stadium? Matthew or no you don't I know don't him? I have no idea I'm Come just on, I'm just trying to figure out my day-to-day at the moment Rich Matthew. But, uh, whenever I figure out where I'm parking I will uh, make sure I give you a buzz look I know you're tight with Clayton Kershaw but let me help you about Los Angeles life as well there's nothing more important than parking there really isn't honestly that's all we talk about is whose spot is where and valley parking and where you park did you really walk did you really walk like walking someplace nobody does that here ever so I'm just trying to Good help to you with this. I'm serious. Thank I'm, tr- you. I'm trying to help you with this. Uh, and then last one for you. Is it true Kershaw blew somebody up on a football field for you when you were kids? Is that really true, Matthew Stafford? Yeah, that's true. He got ejected from a game. Um, you know, he's my center, and a guy hit me late, and then he, uh, he took, you know, exception to that and uh, hit, it, hit that dude even later and got, got booted from the game. But I was all for it. Um, and that's just uh, – <laughs> That's just kind of the competitor he is. You guys see it. Uh, you guys have been seeing it for years. So just imagine that guy, uh, you know, with some football pads on, and and uh, you can you could definitely imagine it. So wait a minute. Was he a late bloomer? Was he? How is he a center? I mean, was he? Was he somebody who just? Yeah, he. he what he shot up in high school. He got uh, you know not that he was a small guy right. or a short guy, but he uh, he definitely like. Went from I don't even know five ten to six three or whatever he is now. Damn. Um, in you know in a, in a quick period of time and and uh, that's when ninety seven came and he has always had the curveball and the all the you know competitive aspects of being a great pitcher. But uh, that extra heat came definitely when he when he shot up. So if you were his catcher, I mean you'd prevent somebody from charging the mound as well. So because you guys go way back, he's done that for you. you Absolutely. Did okay. Very good. Matthew, thanks for the time. I saw you wearing number nine too. Uh, so I'll, I'll whatever, whatever um, you know, you gave Walford, if anything, uh, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll take half that for the parking spot. And if certainly, if it was nothing, if he just handed it to you, I'll take your spot. Is essentially what I'm saying. Okay, perfect. I'll can, keep that in mind. Can we use the Walford deal yeah. as, as our, as our benchmark? 
Stafford as Matthew? framework. Yeah, but I, framework. I don't understand why I'm paying you for you to have my spot. I think it's got to go the other way. No, I know that. That's what I'm saying. Whatever you, oh, whatever you yeah, gave yeah, yeah. Walford, hopefully, you know, unless Walford's just like, here's my nine, and then you should just give me your spot because again, I, I no, will. It was. Uh, what? It was a bit more complicated than that, so I'll uh, I'll well, send you the numbers later. <laughs> you guys did a spreadsheet? <laughs> it's, what are you talking about? This is. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right. All right, Matthew. Thanks for the time, sir. Always appreciate it. Welcome to Los right. Angeles. Appreciate it, Rich. Have you a good bet. one. You bet. That's Matthew Stafford, the Los Angeles Rams quarterback, here on the Rich Eisen Show. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here. 